In, in terms of building capacity in the UK for Islamic finance, what's interesting is that um, a lot of the interest in making the UK um, uh, Islamic financial centre comes from the goodwill that the UK has globally and especially in the Middle East. In, in, you know, and uh, I can imagine that a number of Middle East players uh, would contribute to that. And uh, some of that capacity can be offshore rather than onshore. Uh, do you see that happening? And do you see that you might, act, uh, you know, Gatehouse itself might actually be a more active offshore player rather than an onshore uh, British bank? There is domestic capacity and we will operate in the UK and Europe. Uh, we will develop relationships uh, with, with British corporates and we will um, see uh, the um, development of, of UK corporates cook markets. Mm. The government's well, recent uh, paper on that, has a, uh, that's already enabled, they've already achieved legislation and we will be an onshore organisation. But from the point of view of capacity building, you're right, a lot of that will come from the international markets. So it'll be a true cross-border organisation, mm. um, not solely offshore, that's for sure. How do you read the Malaysian government's um, you know, role in building an understanding of the sukuk market? I mean, the government itself is, I think, the world's largest issue of sukuk at the moment, I think like $60 billion or something like that. Um, so Malaysia has gone further down the line. Uh, but what's your reading looking at Malaysia from the UK? Um, um, are, have they built too much capacity at a very high cost? Um, you know, um, is this still frontier territory that, that you know, that we, there are still things to be done in order to, to you know, to build um, the Sukuk market? The government here has done remarkable um, things. There are sensitivities here with respect to the what some people would call the difference in um, application of some Sharia principles between, say, the GCC and Malaysia, some different treatment of debt, uh, mm. which, is, which is subject to re regular debate. But nevertheless, the Malaysia has built a sustainable capital, Islamic capital market, and it's in, clearly invested heavily in it. Mm. You know, it has taken, it has recognised that there's a cost involved in the, this. The point? And has built it, but nevertheless, and I think they will significantly benefit from their investment. You think so? Because the point being that having the government being the main, the main investor in building the Islamic finance infrastructure for Malaysia um, does not necessarily mean that w there will be corporate um, you know, interest, that, that there will be critical mass build, built on top of that. Um, and is that a sustainable model, you think? It would be a concern in the UK um, today, which is why we need to take that, why we're taking that process relatively slowly. But in Malaysia, that investment's already been made, and mm -hmm. we are seeing um, those, I mean, the, the Petro, uh, Petro uh, Petronas, Petronas uh, is a very good example. We've had uh, Mexis and, 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 and other... Um, uh, opportunities, but now the uh, through the Securities Commission versus Malaysia and and, and elsewhere, we're seeing the reaching out for uh, relationships in international capital markets. We may see dual listings. We may see um, if uh, um, if the markets are kind to us, uh, some mutual recognitions and, and other uh, uh, significant advantages uh, or advances, mm. um, which which will allow that that. Uh, uh, um, th those de developments to really bear fruit. This whole area is new. Um, Gatehouse Bank is new. Um, the environment in which you operate is new. The developments taking place globally, um, a lot of more questions than there are answers at the moment. And we hope that we will be able to continue this discussion with you. Thank, Thank you very much for joining us.